Hello, I'm Bishop Laurie Green and I've been asked to share a couple of theological thoughts about refugees, so let me try to do that. There's an ancient Jewish affirmation in Deuteronomy chapter 26, and it begins, A wandering Aramean was my father. Referring, of course, to Abraham, the faithful father of us all. And it prompts me to ask this question, why did God tell Abraham to move from his home and become a refugee in a foreign land? The act which began the story of our salvation. Scientists have taught us that we all began in Africa and have dispersed to other regions for one of three reasons to run from danger, of course, to seek a better life or to make new discoveries. So we all come originally from one stock and from somewhere else. We each carry the DNA of our refugee ancestors in our own very being, whatever our shape, our size or our colour. And because we're all refugees, Leviticus 19 commands, treat the foreigner in your land as native born. Love them as yourself, for you too were foreigners, refugees in Egypt. So God sending Abraham out as a refugee teaches us that, despite all national boundaries, we are all refugee brothers and sisters, one of another. And a second reason why God told Abraham to become a refugee was so that Abraham could play his part in the well-being of the countries to which he was sent. You may remember that when the children of Abraham became refugees in exile in Babylon, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, telling them to stay there, make homes, care for the welfare of that land, so that all, in turn, could prosper. That's Jeremiah 29. And many refugees through the ages long have proved wonderful assets to the land they've gone to. From Einstein to Mendelssohn, from Martin Luther King to well, even to Michael Portillo, all descended from refugees. God knew that the world would thrive if he sent Abraham to be a refugee. However, when he commissioned Abraham, God also knew full well that to be a refugee is to bear a heavy burden. The Bible is full of their stories. The most poignant of all is the life of our Lord Jesus himself. He came from his home in Galilee into Judea, where Galileans truly were not welcome. The Old Testament tells of the hundreds of years when the North and the South were bitter national enemies. So Jesus and his disciples had the same treatment as all refugees get. Go back to where you came from. Follow our traditions. We don't want these different ideas. And even we are the teachers of the law and you're trying to take our job. Jesus, the refugee, has to live that life of suffering, even death on the cross, suffering of that immensity. But his suffering presence as the refugee in our midst wins for us our own salvation. That's why God sends Abraham and Jesus as refugees. Refugees can be the means of our salvation. So what have I said? Throughout human history, we see the benefits that God gives to humankind through the lives of his refugees, be it our father Abraham, Moses, Ezra and Nehemiah, the Pilgrim Fathers, those who fled Hitler or away from Afghanistan, and those who come to build better lives. So the list goes on and on. We're all refugees. But Christians perhaps especially are refugees, for as the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, has it, here 
we have no abiding city, for we are seeking the city which is to come. We're here, but our heart is determined to help build the kingdom of God. We're refugees here looking forward to something of God's special, special presence. Abraham, our father, God's refugee, lives in all of us, making us all one family for whom we should care with all our heart as our brothers and our sisters.